Hello, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, podcast peeps. Welcome to The Door. And today is another segment of Connection Unscripted. If you tuned into The Door during 2022, then you know that I interview people and typically I meet them and I know immediately, oh, I want to talk to you on the show. And then I invite them and I have kind of an idea of a theme um, based on a convo I've had with them or experience, but we just link up and have a conversation for the good of the listening audience. And so that's what we're doing today. So my guest is Josh. Hello. Who is my buffer half, my BF, my boyfriend. And so today I want to talk about um, relationships And I want to talk about our relationship and maybe the contrast between other relationships we've had and polarity, because we are on very opposite ends of many (laughs) spectrums. The first obvious one being our melanin or lack thereof. (laughs) And so uh, he's a boy. I'm a girl. I'm black. He is white. I'm as blind as a bat and he has sight. So we just have a lot going on. So yeah, I want to dive into that. Welcome, Josh. Thank you. (laughs) You're welcome. Welcome to the show. Thank you. It's good to be here. Yeah. So I want to talk about relationships. Um, How many relationships have you been in? First of all, let's start with our backgrounds, like committed or uh, that's a weird word. You know what I mean? What do Uh, I mean? Four before this okay. that I was serious about at some level. Okay, got you. And then for me, um, I would say, yeah, this would be, yeah, this would be about number four as well. Curious. Okay, so um, what were your previous relationships like in generally, if you had to classify them or talk about them? Uh all involved, <laughs> uh, very intertwined. Uh, I don't know. I, it's hard to put into words, but, um, <clears throat> a lot of that feeling that every single moment had to be spent together. Mm. Every single thing had to be kind of combined. Mm. Um, So a lot of them, you know, yeah, that was, I would say that's some of the big differences between now and then. Um, Yeah, for me, my first major relationship, I married at um, 20. And so I married a 31-year-old and um, I was uh, not in recovery at that time. I've been in recovery for codependency 10 and a half years, and I was not um, interdependent. And so the relationships were very dependent, and you use the word like entangled. And so, yeah, like it was all us and no, it was, it was. It wasn't healthy. I'll put it that way. Um, they weren't all bad. There, sure. there was some wonderful, but the re- part of the reason why I wanted to have you on the show is because for the first time in my adult life, people are actually asking me for a relationship, <laughs> like tips or pointers or, oh, well, how often do you and Josh this? Or how, what does that look like for you and Josh? And so, Um, I feel like because I'm in a healthy relationship now, I'm attract, like people can sense it or see it or feel it. And it's, I'm attracting that. So that's kind of cool. Where before I, especially in my faith community, in the role I played, I was counseling people a lot and I was telling people a lot, but I wasn't living it or modeling it. I just was had a position of authority and was seen as a teacher. And so even though I wasn't living it, I was teaching it, but it wasn't coming from a place of health. It was just because, well, that's the role she's in. And so 
And I even thought I was in a position (laughs) to do so, which now I see I wasn't. (laughs) So um, what, what do you like, what do you like about us? What's refreshing or what's different about us say with some of your previous relationships? Uh, refreshing, man. Um, I, I love how we encourage each other and build each other up, but Mm -hmm. there's not necessarily an expectation. There's not as many expectations. I think it's more of a, um, at least from my perspective, it, it feels like there's more of a respect for the individual Mm -hmm. and a desire to see the individual do well, but not necessarily to control. Like I don't, I don't want to tell you what's best for you. Mm. I just want to see you find what's best for you. And if I can help you do that, that's fantastic. Mm. Um, Whereas I feel like in all of my past relationships, and I feel like I get that back from you as well. Totally. Um, And in a lot of my past relationships, there's always been that, well, things are great, but if you could just do this, but I really need you this. And Mm. it was sometimes very big things. I, tend to be very outgoing at parties and mm-hmm. things. And I like to float around and talk to everybody. Mm-hmm. And I remember one, one particular girlfriend that I had for several years. Mm-hmm. And one of her big things is she didn't like to float around. Mm. And so she felt that because we were close, if I cared about her, I would also spend an entire parties sitting next to her side oh, instead wow. of hanging out because that's what she wanted. Mm. And if I cared, I would want what she wanted. And it, was always that combination of, yes, I, I want to, but can we compromise? Can I sit with you for a couple hours and go right? Like yeah. I, let's go both sides. And it mm. often felt like she, she just wanted the thing that was for her and not necessarily coming to something that worked for both of us in those instances. Um, and again, like you said before, not to say that it was all bad or anything, yeah, but yeah. that has stood out to me very far. In fact, to be honest, the first year or so we were dating, I was waiting for that to come out Mm. in you because I've seen it so often. Yeah. And it took me a while to come to grips with like, no, this is actually, this is okay. This is great. Like we're, Mm -hmm. you seem to enjoy me for who I am and want me to be me. And you're not trying to, you want to spend time with me and we do things together. Totally. You know, we have things in common that we want to do together, but it's not, I don't know. It feels very healthy that we can spend Mm -hmm. time apart and then come talk about those things rather than having to be constantly intertwined in every decision and every little thing. Um, An expectation that word really stands out to me because I feel like in control and expectation after the last second to last relationship I was in, my mantra started to be, I don't want to be controlled. I just want to be enjoyed and to enjoy. And I just started saying that what I want in a partner is I don't want to be controlled. I just want to enjoy and be enjoyed. And I find in previous relationships, which I love with you is there's no competition and Mm -hmm. you're not You know me, I'm into everything and other gentlemen would be, I don't know why, but jealous or intimidated or, and it was like a competition and it's like, well, I'm just being Keela, throwing love and light and roses and building stuff and just doing what I do, following my bliss. But for some reason that was like perceived as, I don't know what, but One thing I love about you is you just really do not give a rip. Not that you don't (laughs) care about me, but like whatever project, whatever thing I'm doing, if I shoot you a random text, guess what? I'm going to move into a one bedroom to check out my relationship with stuff. You're like, cool, zip it or whatever phrase you say, you know, let it rip, you know, or then I'll say, oh, I'm going to buy a laundromat. You're like, oh yeah, that's great. Let it rip. (laughs) Just whatever, whatever I say, you're just, you just hear it out and you just cheer. And I just so love that about you because I feel like you're not trying to control or hinder right. me. And that's, that's super, um, well, I would say I don't really, I don't have any 
designs or plans on your future other than mm. I would like to see you happy. Thank you. I enjoy spending time with you and the time is always best when we're both happy. So Indeed. like, let's be happy. Yeah. And that, yeah, I mean, I appreciate you're a very that. interesting person with great ideas and you like to do stuff like, who am I to tell you how to do those things? You're great at them. Do them. I, I like to stand back and watch and go like, and that is, be proud. that is so cool. And that's one thing I love. Oh, I love masculine men. And you are so hella masculine because <laughs> you're just like comfortable in your own skin. And that's so hella sexy when humans are in their earth suit and they're just okay. And it's not to say you, I've seen you cry. You've had angst, you felt discomfort, but I mean, sure. as a being you're because you're comfortable in your own skin, you're okay with letting people and me do my thing and be, and be who right. I am. Right. And I think with so many humans and I'm speaking from experience, my glass house is a mansion. So I'm not, <laughs> I'm not throwing shade. Sure. The shoe has fit. I've worn the shoe. I own the t-shirt, but when we come to relationships with the expectation that this is going to make me or make me feel better, or this is going to validate my existence or. It's funny because I hear you're saying all these things and I feel like it's um, you're hitting on insecurity. People generally have, I think have those expectations because of their own insecurities. And I want, you know, I'm insecure, so I want you to be a certain thing to fill that hole for me so and I can make be better. Me feel okay. And that doesn't work. It's not even if everybody's trying to do that, it doesn't work. And that's what people do. <laughs> they try, right? And right. so when folks first get together, they don't see any character flaws, character defects, because really you're in love with being in love or you're on that emotional high. But then when the person is not that well, you're not drinking from it, it's not filling you, then you start to land and now you start to see everything that's wrong or whatever. Right. But really it's just you're back with yourself and yeah. you're not cool um, with you. Um, let's touch on some of our contrasts because one of the things <laughs> I love sure. is – the idea of interdependence and that we don't like the chick who wanted you to sit with her at a party at a party right. where you're, <laughs> that's why you're there. You're there at a party. Right. Um, like we don't have to be Siamese twins. Right. And so one thing I love about us is we are so very different, but we still enjoy and choose each other. So yeah. let's talk about some of our polarities. I'm black. You're what? Uh, I'm white. Well, translucent, really. Yes. <laughs> and fish belly white in some parts. <laughs> okay. Don't let all our secrets out. I, I'm a, I am a, I identify as a Christian mystic. I believe God and I are one. I'm a practitioner of Zen Buddhism, but everything is spirit for me. Like, yeah, I am a spirit having an earthly physical experience and your worldview is what? <laughs> uh, I am essentially an atheist leaning towards agnostic, but like uh, very scientifically minded. Yes. I like facts. I like math. Yes. I want details. And like, I don't, I don't care for vague definitions or vague structures. If we're talking about something, I want to drill down to concrete, the absolute concrete facts that I can, can find and everything else yes. I'm willing to entertain, but it's meaningless and could be anything because I can't, I can't define it by facts. Then it's right. And so facts versus mystery, embracing the mystery, <clears throat> even in the name mystic, mysticism. Yep. Yes, I love that. And I will say this, you talk about insecurity at one point. Well, yeah, at one point we landed for, I don't know if it was two weeks or something. I don't remember how long it was, but basically I, because I and this was a personal issue. I was dummying down 
who I was. Remember we were at food lab Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and because you are, I consider you more agnostic, but atheist (laughs) agnostic. And I am one with Christ and Christ consciousness. Um, I was not speaking the way I normally talk. I was not being who I normally was out of consideration for you. And I was changing who I was. And then you said, what? I don't remember remember exactly what I said. said. You said, oh, that's weird too, because you said you would see a billboard or something where, and where you would normally make a comment Mm. about it or say something, you would reel it in out of consideration for me. Because you know I love God. So if you'd see a God billboard and maybe you would make a joke or something. <laughs> right. Which I appreciate. Thank you. You would not do it. But the point was we both kind of weren't expressing or being like our normal selves. And so we were like, ah, yeah. But it was more so me. But really what it was is it went back to feeling like and back to my recovery from codependency, feeling like, oh, because he's this way, you never asked me to change my language. You never asked me to not just be myself, to not just ooze this joy I have (laughs) and these morning revelations I have. And oh my gosh, I was doing this and God told me to go over there and I did and it was on sale. Like you never told me to not just be myself with you. That was something I did. Yeah. And so we landed once for those uh, few weeks, but, and then looking back, what I realized is my um, husbands, both of my previous husbands shared the same faith as me and they didn't even like me. They Mm. weren't kind. Um, One was arrested for grabbing my arm and his fingerprints were on me, which was enough to to be arrested. Um, One was very controlling had a side chick throughout the duration of the marriage. I was the plus one. And it's like, so really, are you going to hang your hat on that? You don't even believe in God, but you're more Christ-like than the men of faith I was in an actual covenant covenant with. Right. What are your thoughts on that? Hmm. Uh, I mean, that's a broad set of topics, but well, it is, but I guess what I'm getting at is like, you're cool with the fact I'm not an atheist. Sure. And why is that? Uh, I think it's because you, well, I mean, I enjoy spending time with you obviously, but I, you're respectful to my viewpoints too. It's not, you're not trying to force me to believe what you believe. Mm -hmm. You're just expressing what you believe because it's what you believe. It's who you are. Um, and I, I absolutely appreciate that. I, I mean, I've, this has been good because it does challenge me to, to rethink those basic ideas I have. Mm. Um, and how am I trying to say, um, basically you're a great example (laughs) of what somebody who's spiritual can be, who thinks things that are different than Mm. what I think more than that, you're intelligent, you're successful and it works for you. Mm. And I don't know. I know what I feel. I know Mm -hmm. what I believe. I know what the evidence seems to suggest to me. Yes. But at the end of the day, I'm just a person. I mean, I'm not, I don't have any special insight, you know, it, it is to me because it's what it yeah. is in my head and what I am, but that doesn't mean that I have it right. That doesn't mean that you have it wrong. Right. That doesn't mean that I have to force you to think about it the way I think about it. Mm-hmm. If you're coming up with all kinds of errors and it's messing up your life, then because I care about you, I will probably try right. and convince you where those errors are. Mm-hmm. But just because you have a different way of looking at it, that doesn't necessarily make sense to me. Mm-hmm. It's working for you. You're not hurting anyone. Right. Like, why would that be a problem for me? Right. It, that's how I feel. It's- and that's one thing I appreciate about you is so many um, atheists and agnostics, um, they're just so angry. And I've never, 
I appreciate that you're so rational and you're logical because I personally, and I have friends who do believe in fairies. Okay. I have dear friends who believe in fairies. I do not, but I don't have a t-shirt saying F fairies, <laughs> fairies are dead. Right. I don't have a bumper sticker that says, you know, with, you know, with a big fish eating a fairy on a, like, sure. if, if you don't believe in something, there's nothing to rail against. And I love the fact right. that you are literally, most people I meet are not atheists or agnostic, they're church hurt, <laughs> but you actually just, I don't know. And I don't see the evidence. So yeah, that's not my jam, but you're not pissed at people of faith. <laughs> Well, to be fair, it took me decades of um, studying myself and looking for answers to get to a point where I wasn't. Mm. Uh, and I do think that a lot of the people who are openly vocal about being atheist, oftentimes, oftentimes the people who are in what you're seeing from me now, where it's like, well, I just don't really believe, they don't talk about it at all. Oftentimes the people who say they're atheist and make a point, I think, uh, in my experience, are people that were hurt mm -hmm. as kids. And you don't have, you're, you're probably not running into people who grew up in a family where their parents believed in fairies and used fairies to control their life and make their life right. crappy. That's right. So nobody's going to care about that. True. But when you grow up in a overly restrictive home mm. that is using Jesus and using those things as a severe control mechanism, as a tyrannical force, yes. a, basically a dictatorship in your life. Abusive. It's really hard once you get out of that to separate the abusive behaviors from the religion mm. and the teachings that were used to back up every single instance of mm. that abusive behavior. Come and on. so I do feel like a lot of times that's why atheists have a reputation of being angry is because the only ones talking about it are the ones that were abused as kids and are angry and yeah. rightly so in a lot of instances. And for me, I was an angry atheist for mm. 15 years. I mean, I took pleasure in telling people that I thought their beliefs were stupid, mm -hmm. but it was that hurt little kid inside of me going like, I can't believe they did this to me and I'm going to get them all back. And mm. it took a long time to separate Oh, no, no, no. Those are things that happen in specific places with specific people. And Christianity doesn't breed that. Religion doesn't necessarily breed that. Mm. That's a dark side of humanity that's mm. in everything. And But I know for me, it took me a long time to separate those things out to be able to go just because you're Christian doesn't make you a bad person because mm. I was around so many people growing up and had so many of those instances that it, like I say, it took me over a decade to really be able to, to suss out the difference there and mm. realize the abuse for the abuse and that it didn't necessarily spring directly from the religious teachings. Mm. That's so good. So well said. Um, what other polarity do we have? Oh, I'm always cold. <laughs> yep yep <laughs> you love you love you love the cold i, I love the yep. heat i dance you don't dance not I've really i have to be you. persuaded pretty heavily okay i've never seen you dance um i've always been more likely to be involved in producing the event or singing or doing some other form of setting it up but not necessarily on the dance yes, floor. Yes, we, our interests are not shared. You're a gamer. Definitely. I'm a um, reader, contemplative. I roller skate. You don't, we have farming in common. We have love yep. of agriculture, aquaponics, things like that. We both ride motorcycles. That is a shared. Definitely. Yeah. That's hot too. <laughs> that's so hot. Yeah. yeah. We have that in common, but, um, yeah, you're, oh, and, and popular things, uh, Star Wars, Lord of mm. the Rings. Um, yeah, what's you, the other you stuff tend to be very you, into nonfiction. Oh, yes. And I enjoy fiction quite a bit. You love fiction. I haven't read fiction. And I think three years ago, I challenged myself to read a fiction book. Why? Got through it, but yeah, I'm nonfiction. <laughs> so chore. we have a lot of polarity. Definitely. 
to me, that polarity is part of what's exciting because it is. It unlike past relationships, like I was talking about, where you do everything together, you have the same interests, whatever. There's you run out of things to talk about. Um, which interesting side note, one of the things I like is that we can be in a room for a long time without needing to talk. Yes. Uh, it's okay to on. just be comfortable. And to be quiet. Um, yes, I love which that. Which is a too. big deal. But on top of that, it's nice that we have different interests because you can bring up something that I have no idea about. And you <laughs> know, I like a lot of things. So yes. like I have a breadth of, of knowledge, mm-hmm. uh, but you still tend to bring up lots of things that I don't know. And I can ask you about and I can learn. And it's interesting. It's fun it to exchange is. that information. And you're very tech savvy. You have your finger mm. on all things technology, even like. Um, (laughs) even bio science, cloning, you name it, whatever advancement is going on in the earth, in the tech fascinated by realm, you, you have a breadth of knowledge (laughs) on this subject and I can just throw anything out and you'll be like, Oh yeah, I just read this study that said, (laughs) I was just reading this peer reviewed article that talked about, and I, and I love that, uh, because that's not my space. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I appreciate that about you too. And I also like that you're, um, you can, you're scary, brilliant and you can fix anything or you can automate, (laughs) you can automate anything. That's really cool. That's not me either, but I appreciate your brain is really sexy. Thank you. (laughs) (laughs) So yeah, that's, that's really cool too. So we have that polarity physical chemistry the sex is off the chain and that's where we'll leave that (laughs) pound it (laughs) yeah but even that too i feel like it's not performance oriented um there there's like it's just you there's no i don't feel like there's you're so safe. I'm so safe with you that I can really let my hair down and like whatever I want to do, say, I feel like it, I can go there. Yeah. Um, for the feminine heart, um, the heart and that realm are very closely connected. And so like things I'll speak for myself, things I would fantasize or think I would like or whatever. If, if I don't feel so very safe with you, then I probably wouldn't. But because, um, I feel so kept and so safe with you, it's like, oh yeah, let's go. You know, (laughs) (laughs) that's, that's, that's wonderful. And that's very new for me. And so, and it could be now because of my age too. But it's like, yeah, let's go. And the fact you just turn me out, brother. I'll just <laughs> say it. It's like, yeah, just turn me out. So, yeah, that's that's been wonderfully like refreshing I said, I like as to well. See you happy. <laughs> oh, yes, thank you. <laughs> okay, and now I'm starting to blush. Okay, I'm black and I'm starting to blush. So, okay, do you do you want to say anything John about well sex before we pivot? No, oh, okay, then we're done with the sex portion. <laughs> no. What 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 else is on um what else is on your mind just with regard to relationships in general or us? I do want to key in on the word freedom. Mm-hmm. What are your thoughts around freedom in relationships in general or us specifically? Um, well, I mean, I think we've kind of touched all Mm -hmm. around it, but, um, I I think it has a lot to do with uh, the expectations and those things. Like I, one of the things that feels very healthy about our relationship is the freedom to be ourselves, the freedom. It's again, not trying to control, not trying to dictate, but just enjoying you for being you. That's what I enjoy. Mm. Um, of course there's boundaries, you know, yeah. there's like, we have where our boundaries are and yeah. that's, you know, a foundation, but it's not a, I'm going to 
turn you into the doll that I want to show off to my friends. I'm not, Mm -hmm. I want to show you off, but it's not because I've created you into something Mm. specific. It's because I appreciate who you are and I like having you around. Yeah. Likewise. Um, I think appreciation is huge. And I think, again, it's just very nonconformist, like back to control. And that's what I, because one thing I love about friendship is my friends are very diverse, mm -hmm. but I just choose them. Yeah. And I think what's great about us is we don't put all of our eggs in one basket. I have a circle of friends. Right. Um, I've told you before, many of my friends are male. They're very expressive, like in areas and things I enjoy and feed off of, they provide Yeah. that you don't. And my girlfriends too, and that's okay. And I have my roller skating friend right. and I have my very lovey, mushy friends because I'm that way. You're not, yeah. that's okay. I don't, they give me that fix. Right. And so we have that you, and you have your friends you geek out with on the things you geek sure, out yeah. on. Um, some of your shows in particular and <laughs> things of this nature that right. I just blank stare. And I think that's so important not to put all your eggs in the romantic right. basket. Well, and I think it is so common to get again with the getting so entangled um, is such a common thing that you end up oftentimes alienating those other friends, mm-hmm. foregoing those other relationships in order to put it all into this one because it's so important. And you, in essence, you 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 um, suffocate the relationship because mm. there's no room to breathe. There's no, if you don't go out and have other experiences without me, how are you going to have anything new to bring to me and vice versa? Mm. If I don't, if I'm always with you, how am I going to bring anything interesting <laughs> to you? Right. If you see me 10 hours a day, every day for the next two years, mm-hmm. the, what is there left? Because neither of us is going out and getting anything to bring back into it. And I think that, you know, that's, that's big. And also, like you say, it's, we're people We're I mean, humans are a, a herd animal. If we get right down to the scientific side of it, we, mm-hmm need social interaction and just two people and that's it is not enough. It really isn't. Mm. Um, and you know, I don't necessarily always want to be around tons of people. I like my space and whatever, Mm -hmm. but at the end of the day, we all need to spend time with each other. And if we're foregoing all of that with other people just to be with each other, then we're losing parts of who we are because I, it, I don't think there are two people that will mesh up exactly on every single thing. And if they are, you're dating yourself. I mean, what's yeah, the, what's what's the, the point? point? Yeah, what's <laughs> it the may point? sound exciting at the beginning, but I imagine it would be real boring after a while. Yeah. And one thing that stands out to me is people ask me, oh, are you in a, so is it serious? Are you in a serious relationship? And I always have to answer no. Like this is the first relationship hmm. I've been in that. No, it's not serious and no, it's not work. I've always been yeah. huge on, you have to Put work, the time you have to work at your relationship. You have to blah, blah, blah. And a couple who've been married like 40 something years hit me up at a conference and they're like, Oh, so are you, are you and your beau serious? And I was like, no, <laughs> I'm like, we, we choose each other. I know I'm your only lover and I know I'm your girlfriend and you know you have a, a a special place with me that no one else has, yeah, including my male friends. So I don't know what we are, but I know it's good, and I know it's not serious, and I know it's not work, but it is exclusive. Definitely. It's exclusive, but it's not special in the sense that there's not room for anyone else back to what you did. We're not globbed to each other. Right. So um, that's my takeaway is no, love does not hurt. I've been hearing that forever. Oh, love <laughs> hurts. Love is a battlefield. Then you haven't really had it because this is so very much like my relationship with God. It's so free. It's so 
joy filled. It's so um, non controlling. Right. Where where God's will for me is my will, which is to be happy. Your will for me is my will. Um, I know you're whole. I I see you perfect. I there you're there's no there's no defects. Nothing about you is right or wrong. It's just different than me. And geez, that's I think what I want for people. <laughs> it sounds to to some degree. I mean, I think part of that is just uh shows that we both have put in the work to get to a place where we're okay with ourselves. Yes. And able to have a very direct, honest communication. That we do have. Uh, and that's something that I think, again, getting back to insecurities and all those things in relationships tend to cascade into all of those problems. And I think, you know, a big difference in this relationship for me is I know that I approached it very differently. I took mm. several years off of dating completely, didn't date anybody for like five years. Mm. Um, and then, you know, when you came along, I still was a little standoffish mm -hmm. and just slow to move because I didn't, I didn't want to dive mm. head first in and lose myself and all those things they talk about because I finally got to the point where I realized that's what was screwing me up mm. all along. And I could point to all the little things that were issues in other relationships. But at the end of the day, I was insecure. Mm. And I wasn't able to show up in the same way. I did try. I did do my best. But mm -hmm. I was, you know, I still am. But uh, I was a broken person looking mm -hmm. to fix things and mm -hmm. looking for stuff out of relationships that, you shouldn't get from a relationship that you got to have in yourself. Yes. First. Absolutely. And I know, I think for me, that's a big part of this now is I'm in a very different place than I've ever been throughout my entire dating, married, whatever life. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, so I'm much more comfortable with, a, I know what, what I want and what I want to be. So I'm not mm -hmm. trying to hide who I am Hello, to make anybody somebody. happy. Mm -hmm. um, but also I know what I want out of it. And that's respect, direct communication, mm -hmm. you know, those things I have from you. Mm -hmm. And so the rest is just falls into place because those are the things that, that are important to me. And I mm -hmm. think important overall. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, I think the fact that we respect each other, that mm -hmm. we want good things for each other and mm -hmm. we're not trying to dictate what those are, mm -hmm. um, goes a long, a long way. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, I, I am certain this has been edifying for someone who is listening. And I think the main pro tip spirit would have, the takeaway as I see it is um, really get with yourself. I mean, oh, it's such a cliche. You have to <laughs> love yourself first. God, I heard that for so long. But now that I've did it and, and like you said, you took five years to learn you, what you want, what you don't want, to be cool with Josh. Same here. I got very clear on what I wanted, manifested you. And uh, <laughs> in my language, not yours. And it's like, yeah, that is the pro tip. It sounds so cliche, but yeah, love yourself first. Because if you're insecure, nobody can fill that void. You have to fill that. And it's an inside job. And, well, then and you, you're the, I, you know, you're the icing on the cake. You right. know what I mean? But I think people tend to love others the way they love themselves. Mm. So if you can't love yourself, and again, like you said, very cliche, but if you true, if though. you can't be comfortable with yourself, how can you be with anybody else? And I mean, that comes down to just on a very literal, I mean, if you're constantly second guessing everything, you can't be in the moment. And so you're not presenting the best you, which is not going to help anybody else out either. It's all... Yep. It has to start internally. It has to start with you mm -hmm. because otherwise, how do you, how, how can you give anything out if you don't have it? So true.
And so with that, um, there you have it. So polarity, inside job, (laughs) insecurity, control, trust, but that's what it all pretty much boils down to in, in relationships. And also I would throw in, consider ditching the list. I thought it had to be these things for it to be right. And it's almost none of those things in terms of the list. And um, it's good. So leave that for your consideration and and, uh, and spirit and your higher self. The universe will fill in the blanks for you. Uh, thank you.